When you first took up singing, I uh, wanted to ask you, Brian, who were the people that you were listening to in the 60s? Oh, who did you oh, love? Yeah, I, th- I, I never get the first time I heard my generation. I nearly, uh, I just couldn't believe it. I went, what a man. The who, for me, uh, were brilliant. You know, the kinks were great as well. Oh, I yes, mean, they were. You know, and... Uh, you know, obviously the Stones were there, and you know the Beatles were just everybody's favorite, really. You know, but uh, but the other bands, um, uh, oh Christ, the, 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 there was one particular band I love. My memory's gone, um, and uh, oh Christ, what were they called again? Remember uh, song title? Uh, over under side. Oh, Yardbirds. Yardbirds. You Thank you very there much. Jesus right. Christ. <laughs> hey, you one. see what happens when you Rock get out? Roll encyclopedia so, sitting uh, right here. Sorry, me. So now the Yardbirds. Yeah. Yeah. I went to see them live in Newcastle, and the Keith Ralph, the singer, just came on, and you know nobody said a word. And I forgot. I was going, and, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen from London. Uh, the Yardbirds. Yeah. yeah, I wish you would. <laughs> That's great. And they just launched into this. Yeah, classic. And it was fantastic. And I just got caught up in it, you know. And then I went out and I stole my first album, which was uh, Paul Butterfield's Blues Band. Blues Band. Look over yonder wall. Yeah. You can still, I still have it in my car. Yeah, so it's yeah. one you take with you everywhere. It's still... It, it, and is it, that the record that made you want to sing, or was it all that stuff? Yeah, like Daltry, well, all everybody. of that stuff, you know, watching Daltry, you know, I don't you all... F- 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 <laughs> he's not, is he? Fade away. Yeah. Ooh, that was a close one. <laughs> you know, all <laughs> that great check. stuff, you know, that you yeah. go, wow, this is the new generation. Because, you know, when I was you know, younger, very little, and all that, and the television, it would all be, and my darling... I love you. Again, Dad, what's that? He's a good singer, him. That's yeah. Dickie Valentine. Who? And you'd be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need my own music. But these people were singing these awful, boring, lousy, stinking songs, you know. And, and they weren't rock and roll. The reality is it was yeah. non-rock. It was, and, it was the unrock. And then you heard this new stuff, and you were like, wow, this is cool. Uh, uh, you know, it was just Little Richard. I remember Little Richard... Uh, on BBC, they had this little thing that uh, a little thing to put in between programs, and Little Richard came on, and I just went and it went jangling yeah. away. There. I went, wow, this guy's good. Yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis, another one. All the know. great fifties artists like that who really yeah. changed it. And, yeah. 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 yeah, set the stage for rock and roll. And I know that the thing about the about BBC in England at that point in time is it was years before they actually started playing whole songs and actually exposing rock. And oh roll. yeah, they were terrible. I mean, you know, they started. It was ITV that really started it uh, with a six five special. Yeah. It was called and uh, and then Ready Steady Go and things like Ready, that. Ready right? Steady Go and all of them came up. Now it's and they suddenly realised there was a market out there. And then of course this was the most watched. Yeah, you know, I think the Beatles brought a record out every month. Yeah. You know, and people would be lining up. You see, this is what I think people miss with iTunes, that the gathering on a Saturday morning at the record stores, meeting buddies and going, hey, check this tune out. It's you a know. whole experience. Or going yeah, it was experience brilliant, of, you know, yeah. and yeah. It, it, I really loved it. And, uh, and you know, you'd get whole gangs walking into, into town and uh, it was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was a shared experience, even going out and buying CDs and records and, you know, going in there and actually, hey, what's great right now? Yeah. Turn me on to something uh, or hearing something in there and go, what is it this? It didn't exist, you know, the little corner store. That's what worries me a little bit about iTunes and stuff like that. Although, you know, they're making the music easier for people to get to. I'm just a tad worried that they're becoming a bit of a monster. And when, and, and when you become that big, you start telling people what you're going to listen to because, well, we don't have that because nobody's buying it, so we don't. We, we, we don't download it you know yeah and I, it gets me a little worried maybe i don't know enough about it but it does get worried because if there's no record companies nobody's going to sign bands or give the bands money to go into the studios the studios are going to close down because they've got no trade <laughs> and all yeah, you've got is old music you it's know? a domino uh, effect it, it is and i don't think people realize and, and it's lazy lovely lazy life we live now we're ping pong hello you know everything's a button away it's scary, you know, and everything's going to get stolen or downloaded, and, and it's, then there's nothing left. You know, the record companies, as I said, 
can't afford to pay anybody any money because they're not going to make any money back because some, some fucker's going to download it immediately. Well, you know what? I've always said to people, you know what? You pay for somebody to, to come and service your car. You mm. pay for your house. You pay for yep. you know a meal. You got to pay for music too. That's yeah. somebody's art. It's somebody's livelihood. It's their work. You yeah, know? it's true, my son. You know? And there's a lot of good lads out there deserve a crack, especially the young kids with the new music. You know? Yeah. Once he's killing that, you kind of kill that. It's, yeah. not, it's not right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Brian, we just want to say how great it was to have you today oh, on the show. Lovely. It was it was great having you too. <laughs> well, you can have us any time, Brian. Uh, we were honored, and I think next week we get to announce some uh, New York ACDC dates. I think yeah, they're unveiling yeah, those I'm next week. That. I miss Can't New wait. York, you know. The old garden has got a magic to it. You just kind of whack. Yeah, you know, I yeah. love it. Greatest city in the world, for sure. Brian, really, congratulations on Black Ice. The record's great. Thanks very much, our kid. Good to see you, Amy, darling. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. Brian Johnson in the studio with Matt Pinfield and Leslie in the morning. Right here on 1019 RXP. Can I have me whiskey now?